All right. Welcome. Welcome. Michigan 500. Pretty excited for this, and I hope some of you folks are as well. Should be a good race. A long race. What's everybody doing this morning? I'll uh, I'll some of the music a little bit. Big KO. 500 miles at Michigan. Uh, I've been very excited for this one. I've been doing the 1989 season, and uh, the past five rounds have been all street and road courses. And finally, back to the high-speed ovals. we got two in a row. <laughs> the uh, Michigan 500 and then the Pocono 500. Um, should be good. I'm, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'd say I'm nervous, but <clears throat> anticipating this one a bit because I want it to go well. <laughs> like I did with Indianapolis and everything. So, patience, caution, going to be the uh, mantra, especially for the beginning of the race. And um, hopefully, we can get through that, get you know decently into the race before anything crazy starts happening. But I have a feeling Indianapolis, you know, was exciting, but was a little sedate. I think uh, I think this one's going to be a little more wild than Indy. Appreciate folks joining. It's been about a month. Ugh, somehow, it's been a month since I've done one of these, which is crazy. <laughs> but time gets away from you, so I appreciate everybody sticking in. Uh, it's round number 10, then, of our uh, of our championship. And we'll take a look at everything, since it's been so long at the championship. Continue, of course. So we just wrapped up Toronto, and that was round number 9. It was the first DNF of the season, uh, which... I think it's pretty good. Made it all the way to round number nine before DNF. I just made a silly pass. I watched it back about a hundred times. Um, <laughs> if I'm involved in a big one, does that mean? Yeah, I, if I'm in a huge crash, yeah. We'll use the um, same same idea as I've been doing for the rest of the races. If, if there's a wild start and like the first couple laps, something stupid happens, I will restart the race. But once we get into it a bit, you know, whatever happens is gonna happen. Uh, and so hopefully I can survive the whole thing. I've done it in eight of the nine races so far. Uh, <laughs> and so the season's been going pretty well. I've got two wins. Uh, we're racing as Ryan Axelson. So I won at Indianapolis. A bit of a fluke, I feel. Um, it just happened into it kind of uh, off strategy and things. But I'll take the win. A win's a win, especially at Indianapolis. And so uh, won the race there. Michael Andretti has been the real threat the rest of the season. He's won four races now. Uh, Phoenix, Portland, Cleveland, and then last time out at Toronto, Michael Andretti also won the real-life race at Michigan in 1989. So hopefully it's not his day. Uh, but he's he's the one challenging me for the championship. And crashed out at Toronto, like I said. it was I've watched it back so many times, but it was really just me trying to get past a lapsed car kind of... Um, in a bad spot and I took myself out so Michigan this will start kind of the end of the season as I think of it and I love every single race from here to the end I think is, is an awesome race we've got Michigan and Pocono the two other 500 mile high speed ovals right in a row uh, this of course forms the triple crown with the Indianapolis 500 and I have won, I won the Indianapolis 500 so uh, I am the only one in contention, of course, for the Triple Crown. If I happen to win at Michigan today, which I'm very much not uh, saying that that's you know, going to be a sure thing, but if I win at Michigan, then the hope's alive for the Triple Crown at Pocono. To be honest, though, I am mostly interested in finishing, finishing well. If I only have a car for third place today, I'm not going to do some crazy setup changes to try to, you know, get to uh, get to first or something. I want to finish for the points and everything, but yeah, if we've got a car to win, certainly. And uh, we'll head to the Triple Crown, which is mostly, in this, just something to say that you did it. But, of course, we'd love to do that. So we got Michigan, 500 miles. Pocono, 500 miles. 89 was the last year that Pocono was run so uh, for a long time. So great to have that one in. And then we go to two awesome natural road courses, Mid-Ohio and Road America. I think favorites of pretty much everybody. And then uh, onwards to the last two rounds of the season, Nazareth. That one's going to be really tricky. It's going to be a lot like Phoenix, the first race from the season. Narrow, fast, one-mile oval, lap traffic. <laughs> it's going to be the whole thing there. And then Laguna Seca to round out the season, um, which will be exciting. So, we'll take a look at the points and everything. 
Ryan Axelson, that's our driver, up top, 133 points. So I'm just 20 points ahead of Michael Andretti. So this is nowhere near wrapped up, but it's really, at this point, just us two. Unless Danny Sullivan, you know, really starts winning and Alan Sir Jr. start winning. Uh, I think it's just going to be between me and Michael Andretti uh, for the end of the season. He's got a 113 points, but three wins. Did I say four before? Three wins. Oh, I guess Mario Andretti won one of the races. That's the confusing part. So Michael's got three wins. Uh, I've got two. They're not too far behind, but my top fives are better. I finished in the top five for the first eight races. <laughs> so hoping to continue that streak today. Um, and, uh, you know, further down the points, there's nothing else really. Of note, I think from MO on back are kind of out of it unless something crazy happens in the championship. All right. So, Michigan International Speedway, 500 miles. It's 250 laps, so 50 more laps than at Indianapolis or Pocono because the track is a half mile shorter. It's a bit tighter of a track, of course, higher banks, higher speeds, even though it's a shorter track. Uh, and it's so fast in the sim. So if you remember, I'm doing the 1989 season here, but um, the physics and everything from IndyCar 2 are based off the 95 cars, which were a lot faster than the 89 cars. But we're almost breaking records here in qualifying, so we'll have to see how it goes. Um, but yeah, we're, we're topping out over 240 miles an hour, almost 250 in qualifying trim on the straightaways, and uh, it's fast, it's fast. So I want to do a couple... Uh, I want to do a couple practice laps with my qualifying setup before I actually do the qualifying, just to make sure everything feels good still. Yeah, I'm hoping I don't fly today. Yeah, it is such a fast lap. So, if, you know, the closed course record for IndyCar, I think, still stands at 241 mile an hour lap average. And, um, we're, we're flirting with that, with qualifying. In the race, it's a little slower, thankfully. But um, we'll go out. I'll do a few laps in my qualifying trim. I have to play a lot with the bars today on the setup to make sure I don't spin the car out. I'm so worried about losing the rear end of the car during during the race. It's pretty easy to do. I have to really be ahead of the, the car with adjustments. <laughs> also, I am going to honor the pit exit here during the race, which you don't have to do. You can certainly just fly out onto the track and it would be faster, but because all the AI have to do it too, um, I've made the choice. I'm also going to do this bottom warm-up lane, which is tricky. Yeah, Jill DeFerrin got the record at California, but they're sister tracks. They're shaped pretty much identical to each other. But you're right, he did get the 241 average record, which if you've never seen, it's, a, it's from 2000, I believe, or 2001. Uh, and it's a insane qualifying lap. It's just flat out for you know, both laps. But Michigan, really wide, so you know you'd think there's plenty of space to pass, and there is. But the groove itself to go fast is quite narrow. I find the AI here uh, to be tricky to work around and pass and and stuff. So it's going to be a uh, going to be a wild one. front straight away so I'll do a lap or two here and practice the uh pit entry yeah it is taka it is difficult to stay on the apron but the AI do it and if I don't I will gain you know five seconds or something and I'm you know I'm racing this semi-realistically and you know, so it's my, my choice there but yeah this is a modded track it's uh Pavel 69's version of Michigan I think originally based on the NASCAR 2 version and he actually sent me a more updated, I think he fixed some draw issues and things with it. So it's, I think he's going to be releasing soon, I believe. Really nice track. 232 there on a warm-up lap. We'll do one real lap here and then I'll bring it in the pits. Practice the pit entry, which is tricky. Got a little less downforce on the quali setup, of course. Sticks pretty nice through the corners, but it's only going to last a couple laps. It's just very easy for the back end to step out, and that's what I'm worried about. 234, that's not going to be good enough to, to qualify up front nearly at all.
but you do end up in some awesome battles here. The lap traffic, like with most tracks, is going to be the issue. Uh, and planning your passes and everything are, are really the tricky, tricky thing. Come into the pits, take it a little easy. You know, there's time to be gained here, but it's also a lot of time to be lost. Ooh, and as if I overshoot, <laughs> overshot the pit box like that. Um, all right. I know there's running out of fuel. I got really light fuel for qualifying, but I'm going to jump in and do the qualifying here, and we'll take a look at what everybody else has gotten. So the back of the grid is at a 229 with Guido Daco. Um, and so I should easily be able to qualify in front of these guys. I think I at least got a 236 in me, but that would only get me into 14th. It looks like a big jump up from Kevin Kogan to Ari Leyendijk towards the front. Oh, well, I think Rick Mears might have the record with this time. 241-1, it's close. But he's right in front of Michael Andretti and Scott Pruitt. I don't, I've never done a 241. I think I might have squeaked in a 240 or so, but I don't think I'm going to be qualifying on the front row here. Try, try my best though. And uh, see what I can get in qualifying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my best lap, I guess, in, in practice is a 238.9, so hopefully I can get something like that, but we'll see. See, so yeah, I want to get one decent lap in, and then I'll really try to push on the second lap. Can't speed in the pits. Now, the AI are a little slower in the race, thankfully. <laughs> Usually. You know, it's I test in everything and make sure things are going to work well, but IndyCar 2 is pretty dynamic in how it sets the AI speeds and everything, so you can't, you know, every two races are never going to look the same. It's it interesting, though. I don't really know what's going to happen here. We'll do our outlap. We've got one outlap, and then we'll uh, start the qualifying. Keep it on low boost so I don't burn too much fuel here on the outlap, but on the back straightaway I'll crank it up. Corner. You know, at a at a first glance this track looks very easy and it obviously is a, a simple layout, but driving it and racing it are two different things. And it's a really exciting track, I think. Especially in real life, but even in the sim on some awesome races if you can get through the starts and everything all right i'm out of the fourth corner this first lap will be a little slower but we'll just get a good good solid lap in hopefully for the first corner a little lift of the throttle make sure the car's settled before turning in but then mostly flat out on the back straight away 246 miles an hour such a great entry into turn three. Still sticks a little off the white line. My car feels a little better up the track, but this should be an okay lap to start things out. Come across the line. 236, right where I said I was going to be. Try a little harder this lap. Just a slight breath of the throttle. Get really down to the white line there on the inside. Try to keep my foot in it. I scrub a little speed with turning the car there. Topping out about the same on the back straightaway into turn three. Try not to scrub off any speed. Let it run itself out. Come to the line. I think this will be slightly better. 237. Ah, oh, just enough for P13. Uh, so I think I'll at least be on the inside, but man, mid-pack. 37, though. That's a very fast time. <laughs> All right, so 237, about a mile an hour off my best, but it's it's dependent on weather as well. Um, so starting 13th, right behind Danny Sullivan, ahead of Ari Leindijk, so I'm in good company, <laughs> but it's a long race, you're right, and you know, mid-pack's tricky off the line, but at least I'm on the inside, I believe. Right? No, I might be in the middle. Right, because it's actually going to be a three wide start. So we look here one, two, three, row one, row two, row three, row four. All right, I should be on the inside, right? I'm not three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah, I should be on the inside, thankfully. 
I did a practice race one time this past week and uh, started in the middle, and it's an interesting time, let me tell you. Everybody funnels down into the first turn. All right, we'll do, I'm going to do a quick warm up with my race setup just because things change. We're at 80, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The weather matters a lot here. Oh, yeah, and we do have, I didn't really talk about who, who got pole and everything. Uh, Rick Mears got the pole, of course. Michael Andretti second, Scott Prude third. We got Rollo Boisel, Mario Andretti, and Alancer Jr. on the second row. Uh, and then Alancer Sr. is in the race again. He raced at Indy as well, but just doing the fast ones. <laughs> Emerson Fittipaldi and Derek Daly. Derek Daly, pretty good qualifying from him to start that far up. Uh, Bobby Ray Hall, Teo Fabi and the Porsche, and Danny Sullivan. And then myself, Ryan Axelson, Ari Leindyke, and Kevin Kogan. If you look further back, there's a few extra drivers in here, of course, but 30 will be the grid. There are 33 at Indianapolis, 30 at Michigan. You could fit 33 on this track, but I thought it'd be fun. Slightly smaller grid, just to make sure Indy is special. All right, but I'll go out. I'm going to do a few laps here of warm up. Make sure everything feels good. Welcome, Staz. Yeah, SK, we're doing a three wide start, which I debated because you can change that in the game, but um, to make it special, all the Triple Crown races will have the three wide. Pocono and Indianapolis are a little easier. Actually, Indy's hard with the three wide. I'll, I'll go back on that. Pocono's probably the easiest of the three wide because that front straightaway is so good. They're so wide. This is my pit exit here. It's, it's a challenging one. You also have to watch out when you're in the race if cars are exiting the pits. Every once in a while, one of the cars on the track will actually really slow down for them, so you have to be very careful there. All right, so strategy-wise and everything, um, it's going to be a five-stop race if everything goes green. In my testing, we have a high chance for some yellows. Uh, it just seems like this track, for whatever reason, yellows are a little more common, which has not really been the story this season, even ones I don't cause. So um, we may be able to uh, you know, have some cautions that will mess up the strategy, but if it went green, it's really understeer there, if it went green the full race, we would stop every 42, 43 laps. That would work out to pretty much five stops, six stints, just like Indianapolis was uh, to get to the finish. And we really don't need to fuel save. So fuel saving is only really going to come into it if we get a yellow at a weird time and pit and then try to go off strategy and all that. Let's see, see how that all plays out. But for the start, we'll be flat out, full throttle, full boost. Got the car set up to understeer quite a bit from the start, and uh, just have to really be careful with the rear end. I'm going to pass on the high side most of the time, I think. Um, a little easier. It's different than Indy. But got to watch out. The AI love to squeeze you if you're side by side coming out of the corner. They will run you into the wall sometimes. Should be able on race pace, once I get through the first couple laps, should be able to do you know, 226s, 228s towards the end of the run into the 230s. Uh, the car changes so much throughout a run. And I can play with the front and rear bar to help control. Through the corner here. Everything feels pretty good. Once you get through the first couple laps, the setup feels nice. And uh, I have a little extra wing in it. Uh, maybe just a tenth of a degree. So I can actually uh, can actually tune out a little bit of wing if we're in a position where that's really going to help me. If I'm in second place and the leader's very close in my speed and with that slight extra, I'll think about it. But if they're, they're a lap ahead, a little bit of wing is only going to make me have a better chance of crashing. We got Ari Leindyke here around Scott Brayton. Some of the other cars are very slow, and so that's going to be a tricky thing too, to uh, make sure I can deal with that. The AI, the fast AI, do an okay job at getting around the slower cars, but they do get caught up sometimes, as will I. So I think it all nets out. Everybody's talking about the US, US 500 from 96. That's not a good uh, omen. Looking like NASCAR today too might get rained out, huh? Yeah, that all 
So this should be done before that would ever start. For better or for worse. Hopefully we'll get through the full race here. All right, things are feeling good. I'm going to practice a pit stop entry, which won't be super valuable because I have full fuel right now, but better than nothing. Gotta be careful getting on the brakes in the corner. It's pretty easy to upset the car and spin out. Find downshifting a bit helps. And it'll feel kind of slow coming to the pits, but you saw in the practice session I overshot the stall pretty easily. That was a little soon, but better early than late. All right. I appreciate everybody joining today. It's been a month since I've done one of these, but it uh, should be good. One of my favorite races in IndyCar uh, is Michigan, and hope they go back there someday. I don't know how it'll work out. It's one of those scary tracks. Um, but it is it is one of the, the cool tracks, I think, in IndyCar history. Oh, thank you. Super chat from Ascari. Glad to make it before the race start. How's the championship situation? Yeah, so real quick before we start the race, um, I'm in the lead of the championship by 20 points over Michael Andretti. And we're really the only two that are in it. Uh, to, you know, for the championship, unless we both have a lot of misfortune. So it's going to be between us. Michael Andretti, uh, he's starting on the front row. He's going to be quick here. He won in real life. And so uh, we'll, we'll have to see. He's starting in the second spot. So he's probably going to get away there with Rick Mears. But we'll have to see how it all plays out. Hopefully I can finish in front of Michael Andretti. That's kind of the biggest thing. Um, number one thing, though, is finishing the race. But as long as I can finish, I know I'll get probably a top 10. And uh, I hope for a lot more than that, but that's kind of my minimum. Hey, Cody, how you doing? All right. So we'll get this thing underway. The Michigan 500. Make sure I've got full fuel and all that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this should be good. I'm just going to load my setup again, make sure everything's good to go. Got the, uh, not the qualifying setup. I think everybody's done that at least once. <laughs> Put the quality setup on for the race, but... All right, so here we go. 250 laps around Michigan for the Michigan 500. All right, starting on the inside too. So we'll have our pace lap. We'll keep the uh, standings up for the race so that we can see that. But right behind Bobby Ray Hall here, we got Teo Fabi as well. Yeah, so I didn't get the pull point. So there's 21 points still up for grabs, 20 for the win. Uh, like Fish Flake says, 20 for the win, and then a one point if I lead the most laps, which I have to pass quite a few cars, but it's a long race. Yeah, I, I was blown away by how fast it is. It's not like they're so much faster than me. I'm going the same speeds, but I don't remember Michigan being quite so fast. Maybe it's this, this version of Michigan that's a little bit faster, but we'll see. It, um, it, it, it's fun to race, at least, though. So. The high speeds, though, sure, certainly make it interesting. All right, but coming down the back straightaway, the start is so tricky. The AI like to check up here and there, so I have to play it really safe. Hopefully not get past. My Indy start was absolutely terrible, but I started pretty far back at Indy, too, so we'll see how it goes. Coming through turns 3-4. Pace car is going to pull off. Everybody's going to accelerate and then slam on the brakes. Not to run into the back of anybody. There we go. Green flag. Try to rock it away. Just got to watch out for cars checking up. So come down towards the first corner. There's one right on the inside of Emo. So I'm actually passing quite a few cars. We'll come down to the first corner. At the inside of one of the Newman Haases. Just take it easy here. Oh, I slide out wide a little bit. Almost into Allenser Jr. Come through turn two then on the high side. Got a car below me. Dobson. All right. Made it through turn one. Got to get the car, get the car going here for the first few laps. Get some slower cars in front. Bobby Rahal fades out wide. I got a great start there, man. The inside is the line to be in. If you're on the outside, you're going to lose a bunch of positions, but it's the luck of the draw, luck of the qualifying. Squished on the inside. Alistair Jr. going to get around, but I'll give it to him here. All right. Accelerate. We got Raul Boizel here in the Domino's car. I'm going to be really tentative here for this first stint. Just because I need to make the moves. 
car is going to come ask me. It's a long, it's a 500 mile race, so I got to be very careful with it. But we'll we'll sort it all out. The cars will get in order from quickest to slowest soon enough. We'll ride here for a couple laps, let everybody string out a bit. It's much easier to start passing when we're not all in a pack. But our old boy's all going to be a little slow there. Coming out of turn two, we'll get up the inside of him. Yeah, Mo's quite quick. See if we can uh, stick with him. I'm gonna run maybe a lane up most of the time. My setup just feels a little bit better up there than trying to really crank it down to the line. Less chance of spinning out as well. Got two Marlboro cars side by side here, but they're actually different teams. There's some Fittipaldi's on Patrick Racing. We got one car that seems really fast, which is kind of what I was fearing. I hope it's not Andretti, but I don't really see. Maybe it's one of the Newman Haas cars. We'll have to see. Might be Rick Mears. I don't think I've seen him yet. All right, up the back of Scott Pruitt here, who I chased for the win at the 500, the Indy 500. We got this nice little battle in front, three wide. Mo on the high side. Pruitt on the low side there. I want to go three wide in the back straight away. I'm going to give that up. So those are the things that might get you in trouble <laughs> so early in the race. Maybe on the last lap. All right, through it fades low. Squeeze me down to the line. You can go under the line. You can drive anywhere you want here, but take it easy. Don't do anything too drastic. I'm going to turns one and two. Might have a good run around the top. Ugh. I'm going to get squeezed right against the wall. Man. All right. In the slipstream of Alan's are senior now. The red helmet. That's how you can tell him. I'm going to turns three and four. He goes low. Should be able to pass around the high side. Yeah, no spotters in 1989. That's very true. All right. A sigh. A sigh. A deep breath. We got through. I think we got through the start. Now to get through the first stint. That's really the focus next. See if I can pull up on Mo here. I think Ari Leindyke's coming with me a little bit as well. Yeah, I don't need to worry about fuel too much. I talked about strategy a little bit before the race. If it goes green the whole way, it's it's pitting every 42, 43 laps, which I should be able to make even on full boost, relatively flat out, and that'll get me the uh, six six stints, five pit stops. Uh, if there's a yellow. And there may be a yellow. There's been some yellows in my testing here. So uh, if there's a yellow, then I'll have to figure it out <laughs> as we go. Maybe some fuel saving then. I don't have to worry about it too much here. But gaining on MO actually quite nicely. Get me into the top five if I can get around him. Problem is, I've got a slipstream right now, and it really does matter. If I get in front of him, I might not have any slipstream anymore. I don't think I will from those two cars. Wide. I might not have a slipstream anymore if I get by him, and so he will actually make be faster than me behind me. That's kind of the joys, kind of the joys of super speedway racing. Can't really get away from each other. All right, round three and four. All right, got a nice run on him this time. Would really like to go to the outside, but if I have a fast enough run, maybe make it up the inside or the corner. There we go. Down into turn one on the low side, really tentative. Make sure I don't spin the car. He's going to come back on me on the low side. Ran for that over-under, but not going to be able to do it. All right, get around Emo into the top five then. Alistair Jr. ahead, see if I can get a gap on Emo. Weird coming into turn three that time. Two hundred and forty. We're only ten laps in. <laughs> this is such a long race. This one feels longer than Indy for some reason. I don't know why. I have less experience around this track than Indianapolis for sure. So I think that might be part of it. Just less comfortable racing here. Pretty wide that time. It didn't grip up like I thought it would. I don't really want to start playing with the bars yet. Yeah, rated about thirty gallons of fuel. 
quarter of my run complete. Right, this whole dynamic's gonna change as soon as we hit lap traffic, though, so... I haven't been too many heroics yet, Artsy. But as soon as we hit lap traffic, it's all gonna go kind of sideways. We'll see, we'll have to plan our moves. Yeah, more laps than Indy, but it's, I mean, it's obviously the same distance. a little bit. It's going to be a long 250 laps if I'm this tense the whole time. I'll get more comfortable with the car as we go. Just very on edge. I had several times in my testing where the car just spun out and it really didn't feel like I did anything wrong. Changed a few settings since then with some of the wings, so I'm hoping it uh better. Yeah, Michigan is hard. I don't know why. It should be easier if, if you look at it on a, at a book. You got more banking. I mean, it's higher speed, though, so you're a little more on edge, I think. All right, so Michael Andretti. I think that's Michael, right? That's not Mario? No, that is Mario. Uh, I just get the numbers confused. If five or six is Michael or Mario, one of the Andrettis is in third. And I'm guessing Rick Mears. Yeah, it's Michael in second, Mario in third. So. Not looking good so far for points. Catching some lap cars, I think. Let's see a few cars ahead. Just gotta plan the moves out. If I have to wait behind a lapped car, it's better than making a risky move. Don't wanna try to. There's no point if you're just gonna crash. You catch the end of the field here. <laughs> I'm saying all this because I need to say it to myself. Uh, mostly, it's not really to tell other people. All right, come to the low side. Kevin Kogan at the very back. That's interesting. He qualified decently well, if I remember. You know, Daco there on the high side should be able to get him. Literally, as I'm saying, don't do any crazy moves. <laughs> Already got one in the books. Run me a little wide in the exit. Give up a little throttle there. Get Didier Thay's ahead. out of him. Yeah, some of them are slow, and we're just going to be passing lap cars the whole race. Yes, Pavel, thank you for holding this track. It's the new version of it that you sent me, so appreciate that. Got a slipstream here from John Jones. 7.9 off the leader. All the way down to the apron there. Just try to cut the track short to get a little extra on Jones. Ooh, right, hit the mic. <laughs> AJ Foyt in front, not looking so good for Foyt today. He's sometimes quick here and there. We saw had some incidents with him at Meadowlands and Toronto. I hit him at Toronto, so hopefully he doesn't have any payback at 240 miles an hour. Don't fade to the outside, lose a little bit of time there, but it's, you know, if you get alongside of them, sometimes they'll squeeze you into the wall. Not a good set of corners. That's Bernard Jourdain, though. Got him to turn one. Don't like entering the corners that narrow. A lot more stress. 
for the side lateral G. All right, so we're coming up on about halfway through the fuel stent. I've only had to change the front bar a little bit. It still feels pretty good. Tires should be fine for a stint. I definitely would not want to double stint them. They get a little worn out towards the end of the run. Yeah, I've got my Pocono 500 shirt on. I don't remember which year it's from. I have a few of them. Look at it after. All right, 10 seconds off the lead, about two seconds behind Alistair Jr. here. That's him right in front of me. Keep chasing him. Not good to be 10 seconds off the lead in the first stint, but I'd be pretty quick today. Ooh. Slight tap to the wall. All's, all's fair. Here we go. Three turns, three and four. Monster Jr. getting caught up a little bit, I think, in front with the lapped car. Nobody saw nothing. I've been running the whole season uh, on arcade damage, and I talked about it a bunch. It, I think it's hard to be very precise, at least for me, in IndyCar 2. It just doesn't have quite the same preciseness. And so, uh, just to make sure these races don't end early every week, I wanted to use arcade damage. Um, you can absolutely still damage the car. I got a DNF in the last race, and so you can't be stupid with it. But if a little wall touch like that might damage the wing on full damage, which is realistic, but, um, you know, I want to avoid silly, silly stuff like that. Have a little more fun with this than trying to be super conservative the whole time. Definitely gaining on Alistair Jr., and I should just be very close to slipstream distance, 1.4 seconds. So if I get get up to him and get in that slipstream, I actually will be able to catch him a lot easier. Fifth place. Could be worse right now. Could be a lot worse. Yeah, I think it's Rick Mears way up front. Just on his own today. It's Rocket Rick. But we'll see. There's so much race to go. The yellow flags. Plenty of pit stops. Get a car in the pit lanes early for a pit stop, so that likely is not a good sign for them. 1.3 seconds. Back straight away. Turn three is the scary one. I will agree with what Pavel said earlier. As you get on lighter fuel, the car starts to get kind of a light. I think Rick Mears broke his feet at Senair Speedway in Canada. Return. Got into a quiet pocket here. Not a lot of cars. We passed all the really slow cars and we'll pass them again soon. It's going to get tricky when we get to the cars that aren't that much slower than me. 10 seconds, so the leader's actually being held up a little bit. Either that or I'm a lot quicker. I haven't been paying attention to the lap speeds at all. <laughs> you in the chat. Bit of a high entry there into turn three. Definitely in the slipstream now of Alistair Jr. just nipping at it. 1.1 seconds, so just a little bit lap by lap. You want to avoid ripping out of the throttle into the corner. That'll upset the car. It transfers all the way forward, and that's where you can get a spin. So if you actually keep a little bit of throttle in, even when you lift, it should help keep the car more stable. At least what I've found. got a 
stack of cars in front, too. Into the lower end of fuel. I gained a half second on the leader that lap. If you want to watch some good racing, I mean, the Michigan 500s from you know, the late 80s, 87, 88, through 95, 96. Those are some, I mean, I know 96 had the start, and that's all, um, that's all anybody talks about with that race. But the race itself was actually pretty good after that. Great. So gaining, definitely gaining now on Alancer Jr., 1.9 seconds off the lead. Actually, I found out recently, they talked about adding a chicane to the back straightaway here in, I want to say the late 80s. They actually built it. And they had some cars test it. Uh, and you can see some satellite pictures from it. Uh, but as far as I know, there's no footage of anybody testing it. Uh, and thankfully for us, <laughs> they, they decided not to do it. That would have been insane. All right, so a huge pack of cars. Almost looks like Bobby Rahal and Danny Sullivan. And we might be actually catching a lot of cars, faster cars. This is going to be an interesting group to try to get through. This is what the leader probably got held up in. It's like Alancer gets to the inside. Got Ray Hall here. Try to look low on Saline. We'll bring it all the way down into the apron. Oh, man. Here we go. Around those two, at least. Yeah, I got to be super careful through this. Not really worried about the position right now. I just need to get through the traffic. Here's Alancer Jr. being held up. And seems like everybody's caught in this pack. All right, just going to take the low side again. Get around Alancer Jr. maybe. All the way in the apron is kind of cheating. They do it these days. <laughs> All right, coming to turn one. Got Danny Sullivan on the high side there. Oh, Alancer Jr. is going to skate back around me. It's held up onto the back straight away. Ray Hall coming around too. Oh, I'm getting trapped in behind Kevin Kogan. Right next to Bobby Ray Hall. Out of turn four. Love to get to the high side right now, but there goes Ray Hall around the high side. I'm gonna come down the low side of Kogan here on the front straight away. Should be able to get him into the corner. Ooh, just nipped the apron there. You don't want to do that in the corner. All right, so I'm making a pass on a few of those guys. Held position, but Ari Leindijk's right there behind me, too. Seven gallons of fuel left, so we're getting in the qualifying levels of fuel. <laughs> yeah, luckily, you can watch through your fingers. I have to pay attention. Exercise and patience, I think. Be easy to say, oh, I can gain a position here. And uh, at least in my experience, it doesn't tend to work out well. Sullivan pinches me here into turn three. Oh my God. Oh, but Boisel swings down low. Get on the low side of Alistair Jr. Work down the front straight away. I don't want to stick it there. Into turn one, nice and easy. These three line up on the outside. I'd rather go around the outside if I'm completely honest. We follow Junior here. I'm gonna turn three. These two fade low. They're gonna fade out wide. Oh my God. All right. Sneak around Boisel and Thays. The front straight away. Use my uh, cheater line again. No shame in it. What gets me to the end? All right. Right in behind Alistair Jr. now, though, and we got a little bit of clear track so we can see what our actual pace is. 
Yeah, we're going to have to pit pretty soon. First pit stop. We need to get to lap 43, hopefully. We're at lap 40 now, so we're going to be just perfect on our pace. It's, you know, you could go into save and do one less pit stop if the whole race were to go green and you were more conservative, but I don't think you'd be nearly fast enough to make up the time. But it's definitely possible, though, to save enough fuel if you drag it down to boost, you know, six. Seven or six. He gets held up there, down the inside, on the front straightaway. I think that's Guerrero helping me out. Up to fourth. I'm going to turn one. Alright, get around Alistair Jr. up to fourth position. We got three gallons of fuel left. A couple more laps then. About 0.9 in my testing is 0.9 of a gallon per lap of fuel. Junior's gonna have a good run here. I got nobody to slipstream with. We got a couple cars on the pit pit lane. One of the Newman Haas pits I'm up to second be able to go a couple extra laps that might pay off in the end we'll have to see have to be really careful with the car now it's I'm gonna do one more lap okay just gotta be careful with the car it's so easy to lose the rear end coming into the corners a little, a little high there back in the throttle across the line we'll pit next time by I got Alistair Jr. right on my tail which is not always the best leading a lap all right on strategy but just take that. There's one of the Newman Haas cars leaving the pits. Oh, Alancer Jr.'s right behind me now. I'm going to go to the low side. If he wants to pass me, that's fine. Coming to the pits this time. But he's going to pit too. All right, this going to be a little tricky. Get it down the gears. Come to the inside on the first pit stall, which makes it a little more tricky than it should be. But coming to the pits a little slow. All right, making the first stint. And we just got to watch the speed on the exit. Watch the cars entering as well. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. There we go. Got a couple cars entering. Oh, no. I could have gone. Maybe it's so tricky to figure it out. So I lost a lot of time there exiting the pits. Won't speed. Make things worse. Watch for cars exiting. Watch the speedometer. Don't want to go over 80 miles an hour. So definitely there's Alistair Jr. leaving in front of me. So I lost, I lost a good amount of time there, but... It's just easy. You can't really judge the speed of the cars coming up from behind. All right, we'll try to make an exit again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna obey the rules a bit Ooh, as I slide above the line there. But I'm gonna do the apron exit like the AI have to do because I'm cheating a little bit, but it would be a big cheat. <laughs> All right, back on the track. Get it up the gears without blowing the engine. Yeah, not the best stop, but no disaster. That's exactly right. All right. Oh. Actually, got to lower the front bar a little bit. I'm still in fifth, so all in all, not the worst thing in the world. 17 seconds off Rick Mears, though. Man, <laughs> that's not good. The car is so different on full fuel. Get used to that. The car is coming out of the pits here. Then come on the high side of Danny Sullivan. Just gotta get used to the car again, get those tires up to temperature. Hello, Boisel. Man, I can't even see Alistair Jr. in front of me. I'm 19 seconds off. So I'm about two thirds of a lap behind the leader at this point, which is really not what I was hoping for. It looks like Rick Mears has got some speed today, but I'll try to put the hammer down and see what I can do here. Car exiting the pits here. I'm just committed to the high side. The AI pretty much always take the racing line when you're when they're alone. You can kind of bank on that. Yeah, we're talking about the curved pit lane. One of the quirks of the early Papyrus games until NASCAR 4. 
the pit lane had to be parallel to the track, so it had to be a curve. Line. All right, pulled in a little bit. About 200 laps to go. There were four seconds off of Balancer Jr. I think I'm quicker than him, so I should be able to catch him. He might be one of these cars in front of me. See how it plays with lap traffic under the high side of an R. Jordan there. A alphabet. Appreciate everybody. Jumping in, I know it's it's been way too long. It's so easy for it to be a month suddenly before before I come back and do one of these. It's so many ideas, not enough time. But IndyCar is actually over, so fun to have maybe something to to watch. Maybe bunch of Carter here on the high side. I'm gonna turn three. Here we go. Hey, RJ. Talladega Super Speedway watching me, man. <laughs> yeah, I think I've got a car behind me. I gotta change the uh, pit board there. <laughs> you know, it's funny you mention the trailer. I always thought it would be funny to uh, do like in a American truck sim caravan between races. It would be funny. I didn't know this was... I didn't know this Michigan race, or Michigan was the only time Pancho Carter won. He also had a terrifying accident here one year. Breaks like real IndyCar, yeah. David. It's true. I would actually... This might be controversial. But I would actually prefer... If they're not going to add more races, for whatever reason, they're going to stay at 16, 17 races, I would rather them actually extend the season than keep it as tight as it is. We spread them out more evenly. We have a few pockets of like weekly races, which is a fan I love, but um, I think having the season be a little longer, better paced might be better. I don't know. More races would be good. 20 races, I think, would be perfect. All right, so holding station here with Alistair Jr. That's him up there making some passes. I'm just going to have to play the lap traffic. Uh, I hate to say it, but I'm not sure I've got a car to win. I mean, I felt the same way at Indianapolis, and we saw what happened. So we'll just keep in it. But Mears is fast. I'm going to maybe have to hope for him to have some misfortune, which very much can happen. We've seen all season cars blowing engines. Blowing engines and wrecking even. Any laps left for something to happen. Yeah, I'm pulling away from Ari just a little bit, which is good. Got Steve sailing in front. You can see Alancer Jr. there just kind of dancing below a car. It's going to be an awkward place. If I, if I went high there, maybe 70% of the time it would have been fine, but there's a chance that he would just pull up into me. 70% is not nearly good enough for 50 laps into a 250-lap race. Yeah, I mean, look, there's people that are paid and have full-time jobs doing things like the schedule, and uh, it's honestly a little tough to criticize IndyCar with how successful it's been in the last five years. Maybe it was a little easier in the 2000s 
because everything seemed to be going so poorly. But these days, it's, it's actually growing pretty well. So, as a fan, I'd rather have more months where there's IndyCar than less months. As we turn one, it looks like Didier Day is in front, Alistair Jr. working around him. I'm closing up on him ever so, ever so slightly. Slipstream here. Days fades low. Rock it into the corner. That's the place where you lose the car, so every lap I'm literally holding my breath as we go into turn three. for the long, long race. Start was crazy. I'll have to go watch that back later. It's getting off the line and fighting through traffic for the first five laps as everybody sorts themselves out. I found, in this season at least, with the cars that I've got, that uh, some cars qualify really well, but then they're not as quick in the race, and vice versa. So you end up with a lot of faster cars in the back and slower cars in the front to start the race, which is fun, actually. It would be boring if the car that qualified first every week was the quickest one. Um, you know, Rick Mears, obviously, in this one has been doing pretty well, but... Through 190 laps to go. No cautions yet, Andrew. Surprising, actually. In my testing, I've had a few pretty early on. We're on, on our fuel strategy. We should be pitting around lap 85, 86. Arrow entry there into turn three. Scott Pruitt's been lapped behind me. Oh no, I am only 15 seconds back now. So at the start of the stint, I was 19, if you remember. Gained a few seconds on the lead, actually. We'll just keep in it. SK, I don't... You know, I could make wing and tire adjustments for sure, but... Things seem to be working out all right right now, so... I'm hesitant to try to play around with things. It'll likely just end with me in the wall. Alancer Jr. gets hung out wide here from Dominic Dobson. I'm going to turn one. is going to be stuck in the middle. The low side of him down the back straight away. I'd love to take a better line into three. Don't turn the wheel that much. Fade out wide. Then get back in the throttle. Yeah, it feels like my car is pretty poor for the first couple laps, and then it, then it wakes up a bit, which is all right. I'd rather have it that way than it be... Oh. Locked there. That was sketchy. That was Roberto Guerrero. Thank you. Lost a whole bunch of time. Right, Dobson. We'll pass him again. Too. Yeah, that was that was closer. <laughs> that stuff can happen with the lapped cars. He just didn't go low for some reason. He kept it high, and uh, that was the line I wanted. Oh man, feels like I put a lot of weight on the car through there. Bobby Ray Hall in front. Man, Ray Hall has had such a bad season. He qualifies okay. He got the pole, I think, at one race, but kind of the opposite of his son. side. See, that's how it works. Got a whole group in front here. Go 
the red car. That's Barbaza. Bernard Jourdain off the tail there. He's very slow off the pace. Monster Jr. being caught up behind Heimrath. Swing down low. Just stay in the slipstream here. Jr. Oh man, it gains you so much more speed. Barbaza hanging it out there too. That didn't work out like I was thinking it would. These two probably slow each other down there on the outside. Oh, Heimrath sticking in it. Eye side. Oh, that's a little tight. That's like right at the line where they might come up into you, but able to get around him. We're talking about Oswego. We'll be there someday. That's on my list. I love super mods. All right, Pancho Carter here on the outside. So he goes like eight hours away by car, which is just in the line of doable, but it's car. <laughs> All right, so I got around those lapped cars. a Marlboro car and Teo Fabi is like the only green car in the field so you see him from a mile away literally oh, this is a pack this is definitely a pack AJ Floyd on the outside we have to take our time here 180 to go not even close to halfway so Nice and easy. Jay Foyt gonna fall to the back. We got Alancer Sr. there. And I think we're putting a lap on Alancer Sr. Facing his son. Right. Inside, inner fades down low. Oh, I got a nice run. I didn't have to let up there in the middle of the corner off. She used the whole track. All the way down to the apron, we got John Jones squeezing me. Should be able to get around him for turn one. Got around Alancer Jr. again. Chasing Michael Andretti now. It's good to see Mario is maybe a little faster than Michael this week. Some fit of Haldi here. Man, not a, not a good race for him. It's surprising. in front so come down into turn one. Oh Emma's gonna come back around on the high side. I gotta keep it down low. I was hoping I could oh no Alistair Jr. just crashed behind me. Yellow flag oh my god <laughs> we'll take a look at the replay in a second once everything gets organized. What happened? I gotta pit I gotta pit right now. Thank you. Hope I should pit. I think I should pit. You always pit kind of immediately, right? What happened there? That was Alistair Jr. So let's let's go back in the replay. We'll take a look. Yeah, hopefully I don't get lapped, but all right, so we're coming across the line. I don't think I hit him. Maybe he just He was right behind me. Oh, he's quite a ways back and he just spins. Oh, Hits the wall. Get hit again. It's always... Oh, he got tagged by Saline. Oh, and he actually drives away. <laughs> Without a helmet, but... Um... Right, so... This is going to make things interesting strategy-wise. So I'm in the pits. Filling up. I get out of the pits here. So I think I'll keep the lap. This probably worked out <laughs> amazingly for me. Boy, here's some cars going around. I really hope I don't lose a lap doing this. 37 seconds. Ooh, right against the speed limit. Come on. There goes the pace car. No! Oh, I think I might have lost a lap. I don't know. Can I, can I overtake the pace car? No, 
I can't. So I think what's going to be happening here is that I'll be actually kind of in the lead. I don't know. See if everything can sort itself out. Let's go. Get behind Bobby Ray Hall. This is where things get kind of messy. Come on Ray Hall. I want to get a black flag. Yeah. He'll likely be out of the race, I would imagine. Ugh. Hope I don't get nailed by a car. So is Ray Hall going to be able to pass the pace car? He's looking low. I mean, I came out of the pits, but it's going to depend on where. Let me, let me, let me. Oh. Oh, that's almost like a victory. Okay, so what happened was Bobby Ray Hall just got stuck behind the pace car for a second um, because the pace car pulled out because the leader had passed, but I passed the line and the pit exit before the leader got to me. So we're going to be able to come around, get our lap back, and hopefully not get smashed into under yellow. Sometimes that happens around here. I have to wave around. <laughs> Now, I didn't get a wave around. I, I was supposed to be in this position, but it just the timing was very close. I, I was worried about that, but... So I think I'm going to be behind every car. But I just got a pit stop. I should actually be trying to go fast here to see if I can pass any more cars in the pits. So I'm in fourth place in the last car on the lead lap. Ounce Jr. is out of the race, even if he's still in it. He's not going to be a factor anymore. So I just got the two Newman Haas cars and Rick Mears in front. Long way to go. I got really lucky there. <laughs> but I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. I'm going to be in the very back. And uh, it's going to be a hectic restart. One car behind me. Yeah, I don't know who pit or who didn't pit. I mean, part of it, I guess. Who would be able to tell you who pit? In real life, but <laughs> this restart is going to be maybe harder than the actual start was. I got a uh, maybe Emerson Fittipaldi behind. Me. Yeah, the game would black flag me if I passed under yellow. Yes, but I didn't pass. It's just Bobby Ray Hall is the car I'm supposed to be behind, and he just his AI got stuck behind the pace car for a lap. We've got 174 laps to go. Um, we're going to go green next time by. I'm going to... It's going to be like an impossible restart here to, to gain anything. I'm just going to take it easy, try to get through through most of the traffic. I'm in fourth now. Looks like Mario Andretti in third. And he's not super far ahead of me in line. But Michael's towards the front. And then, of course, Rick Mears leading the way. Yeah, single file restart, thankfully. <laughs> but it'll get, we'll see. It'll be double file very quickly. Um, once we get going, I'll figure out the fuel strategy. We might have to save some. I don't know. We could always get another yellow flag. Let's see. All right, we'll come through turns three and four, and I'll get that boost back up. Just got to get through this restart clean. IndyCar has always been single file up until for a few years they tried it double. Not a good idea. All right, green flag. A little bit far behind off the start, but everybody's going to check up a bunch and get around Bobby Ray Hall before the line. There we go. Six gear. Dobson's going to fade back. I got full fuel, cold tires. I got to be really careful here. Oh, pinched on the low side. Some of these guys might have low fuel. It's going to be all messed up now, <laughs> strategy wise. Ray Hall is going to come around the high side of me. Played it really easy, but I just got to make it through this this restart. Yeah, they didn't do anything back in you know, the 90s or 80s in IndyCar to make sure all the leaders were together or anything like that. It was just wherever you were, where you started. All right, coming to turn one and understeering. It changed the bars, but through the first couple laps. Car feels really good once we get underway. It's just getting there that's hard. Alright, 
side by side in front. Kevin Kogan. Wow, it looks like the leaders are all packed up there too. Be surprised if Rick Mears is able to just get away. He didn't seem quite as quick after that first stint, which can happen. Oh man. He passed the low side again. Getting stuck up here behind Kogan. Really in the soup. Turns three and four on the high side. I'm quick. I just got to get some open air. The slipstream. Oh, I was going for that. Emo decided to go up wide. And those two. Oh, man. Kogan almost hit me. Jeez. I don't know if you can see his tire right there, but came out of nowhere. The low side of Thaze into turn three. Pass on him. All right, starting to get a little more strung out. That is, that is so tight. That the Kogan there was so close. Too close, really. each other On the high side of mo here at least stay up high stay up high i want to get the slipstream Roger carter goes down low of course 12 seconds off the lead so mears has gotten away got a lap on ari now so things are looking pretty good here Ugh. oh no ah, i hit the wall pretty good i think i'll be okay don't need to be doing stuff like that full damage that would completely end the race. Andy Lewis here thinking he's gonna go down low, yep. Back straight away. Oh squeeze up in front of MO. That was too much. Can't do stuff like that. Gonna get down low on me anyway. these guys. I'm just fooling around with them, really. I'm doing that. I turn one. Get around Lewis. I'm going to get stuck up here behind Senior. <laughs> it's so tight on the exit there. There we go. He fades down low. Finally, some single file. Oh, oh Derek Daly is in P5. There you go. Well, I, you know, I would honestly be happy if there were no more yellow flags, because that is, like, way too intense. And what makes it exciting, though, and the, everything packs up and the strategy goes weird. All right, so where I am right now, I've got 34 laps predicted of fuel. If we're going flat out. We can do about 42, 43 laps. How many laps do I have remaining? 164, which would be 40, 80, roughly three more stops from now. I'll save a bit. I don't know. It's such a tough call to make without somebody really crunching numbers and knowing exactly how long a pit stop loses you. And right now we're set up that we'd have to do a little fuel and run at the end, which would lose us a lot of time. But I'm not sure that the leaders are going to be on a different strategy than me anyway. I'll have to make a call on it. We're also get, there's going to be a stint or part of the stint once all the lapped cars or the slower cars start pitting, the ones that didn't pit under yellow, and we're going to be very fast.
this pack here. Bobby Ray Hall, who I started right behind, so he's pulled out quite a bit, but I'm back on him. Oh, Rick Mears is pitting. Uh-oh. What does that mean? That could be good, though, because he's going to be heavier. Oh, my God, this is too hard. Where are my strategists in the chat? The Rick Mears pit, meaning he didn't pit under yellow. And so he's going to be... He's definitely just going to have three more stops, I think. Quite slow. i got to be careful, too. These guys are going to start pitting and everything, which is not going to be a good thing. Yeah, I think some of them are actually going to pit. There you go. Oh, good thing. <laughs> good thing I chose to go high there. Yeah. Mario's in the lead still. Rick Mears a few seconds behind. I bet I'll be quicker than him because I've got lower fuel. I can get around this pack of cars here. They all at least pit or something. Coming out of the pits there. Oh, that's Andretti. Michael Andretti. Pitting there, old boy Zell. It's down low on the front straightaway now in the slipstream. Should be able to get around Heimrath. 1.8 seconds. So, I might, I might push on this stint. I'm going to have such an advantage over Rick Mears right now. I can't even talk. There's just too much happening here. The turn on the high, high side. Man, thank God there's no marbles. Come through the area, cars pitting. Yeah, I mean, I am glad I pitted under yellow, but I'm going to be I'm set up right now. If I just run flat out, I'm going to have to do a stop and go, like fuel, a little shot of fuel towards the end. So i got to save, like, 10 laps of fuel at some point. But right now, I'm going to be so much quicker than Rick Mears that... Plaza coming out of the pits there, all right. Now to P2. I'm going to be so much faster than Rick Mears, I kind of want to take advantage of that. Got to get a gap on him so I can use that later to save and maybe we'll equal up. Whoa, see, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes, not always, but once in a while, the cars get stuck behind a car leaving the pits in there. So slow. That's Derek Daly here. Alancer Jr. is back in fifth. Oh, man. Back from the dead. If this was on realistic damage, he would have been absolutely out of the race, but... Coming up on just about 100 laps complete, and it's been quite the race so far, I think. A lot of stuff happening. On a weird strategy now, because of the yellow. Yeah, Mears gained a bit, but let's see what it is this lap, because I finally had clear, clear road. <laughs> the engine block is cracked in half, but still runs good. Yeah, that's what Junior's saying. I don't know how this is going to work out. I really don't. That's I love, love racing in IndyCar 2 so much for that. The races are just always up in the air. The old Pappy Sims are good at that. I just did that video on R Factor 2, and wheel to wheel, the racing is better than that. Absolutely. But there's no strategy. Maybe there is. I haven't explored it all the way. But, you know, with the older Pappy Sims, not only, and, and Jeff Crammon's Sims, too, not only did they have the AI capable of lapping the track, but they also had strategy and personalities. De engaged mechanical failures, all that stuff. <laughs> Man, I swear the temperature in this room has gone up 15 degrees since I started. You know? <laughs> I don't think it has. I'm just trying to get some good laughs. I'm still, I'm still tentative. I think I'm going to get some folks yelling at me after for how 
tentatively I'm going into the corners, but it'd be so easy to spin the car out by accident, and uh, don't want to do that. Yeah, I mean, arguably the AI in Jeff Crammon's games aren't as good as wheel-to-wheel, -wheel, at wheel-to-wheel -wheel and maybe some of the newer sims, but, you know, overall, at conveying a full race, and they're still good at doing wheel-to-wheel, -wheel, don't get me wrong, but, you know, conveying a full race is what they're really good at. Scoop by Saline there as he exits the pits. Got Kevin Kogan in front. Real fast right now, but at times not working as much as I thought it would. Yeah, Tim with race. If you want to see some interesting stuff, Tim with uh, Race Sim Central got this all hooked up with a rendition graphics card and everything. It's been taking videos and screenshots and, and stuff of it. It looks good, you know, compared to this. It looks much more like NASCAR 3 level of graphics, but with IndyCar 2. It's a shame that we can't all experience that. Yeah, I haven't been pulling in at all. Drew past Poncho Carter here. <laughs> Tim, you always get mentioned. Yeah, I want to try to save a little bit more in the corners maybe, but I use the throttle a lot to balance the car here, so... One fifty to go. I think I can do. I think I can do two more stops. Hey. Hit at three more stops. Yeah, I got to do three more stops, and I think everybody else will also have to do three. I'm gonna knock it down. down my boost a little bit. Alright, so I got clear track. I'm on light fuel, so I'm kind of quick as it is. Let's see if I can save a little bit of fuel here. Problem is, actually, if you slow down a bit, you start to be able to uh, go flat through the corners, which I don't know if that ends up saving you as much fuel. In 47 laps. I don't know how, how this is going to work out fuel wise because I'm like kind of halfway through a stint and saving 20 gallons is a lot. Yeah, rendition was like Direct X or OpenGL. It's tough to imagine. There was a time before everybody knew what the graphics standard was going to be, and it's, it's kind of turned into DirectX. But there were several other standards of graphic engines, and Rendition was one that was only around for a short time, and it was the only one which this game was coded to, uh, to take advantage of. And because there's like five games that use Rendition as the only means of acceleration, nobody's ever developed any sort of wrapper or converter to utilize it, so... Most of the other games that used Rendition also used, like, OpenGL or DirectX, which there are obviously, like, DG Voodoo and stuff like that. So it's just kind of at that weird time where nobody knew what the, the real one was going to be, and Papyrus had moved on to NASCAR Sims by then anyway. The actual graphics cards these days... Oh, Rick Mears is in the pits again. Uh-oh. He might be having some engine troubles. He's had a lot of failures this season. He's in the pits. That's definitely not a routine pit stop. That might have taken one of the biggest competitors out of this. Might be me versus the Andretti's at this point. This just got more complex. Zell fades down low, go around the outside of him. I know 
know, it's crazy for those of us that were doing computer stuff. You know, back even in the 90s and into the 2000s, you would buy a new graphics card seemingly every year, if not more often, and it would be completely obsolete and not able to run anything, you know, six months later. I've had, you know, the card, I don't even remember what I have now, but I've had it for like four years or something, three years, and it's fine. So, I'm in P2, I'm 9.3 seconds off Mario. Mario gonna do it again today? He's been very slow in some races, and then randomly he's he's like this. I think he won one other race this year, right? But otherwise, he's been way off the pace. Kind of, honestly, very realistic for how he was this time. He won his final race, but the rest of the races were... He won some one race in his final couple of seasons, but the rest of them were pretty far off. Got about 10 gallons of fuel. About, we can, it's almost a gallon a lap, but with the saving, maybe not. Flat out, it's about 0.9 gallons a lap. Oh, this race so far has been pretty interesting, and it's not even halfway. 140 to go, so we're getting close to halfway. Our exiting, uh, New Heimrath is going to slow up. Originally, I scheduled this so that it would be done by the time the cup race starts, because I know a lot of folks like watching that, but I don't think that's going to happen. Ten seconds out. I'm losing time to Mario right now, but he might have to make an extra pit stop, and if I'm doing what I think I am, I might be able to actually make it on one less, which would certainly clear up 10 seconds. This game was released in 1995, originally. So Rick Mears is not out of the race, but he's two laps down, so he had some sort of issue. Maybe a wheel wasn't tight or something. Hogan again almost hit me on that restart. Yeah, it might not be. It's hard to save fuel around here. Kind of going flat out. We can kind of make up our own story for Rick Mears, because unless he DNFs, the game won't tell you. And uh, he, might, he probably didn't hit anything. He just suddenly pitted. But it's because the game said, oh, he has a failure or something. Yeah, if, if anybody's interested on how to run IndyCar 2, I made a whole install tutorial. Very, I think, in-depth. And it's uh, in the description of the video. I'll put a link to it, I think. Tells you how to set it up exactly like this, how to install tracks and cars and all that stuff, so. Hopefully, hopefully helpful. We got one coming for Grand Prix Legends, too. It's just waiting on a couple things now for like six months. But once the once the things come out, I'll be able to post that. Somebody in my mirrors appearing. We have about five gallons, five gallons of fuel. Scott Brayton coming up behind me. That's not good. Brayton's faster than you. I have no idea how this race is going to work out. There's just too many strategies happening right now. I'm like five laps off of fuel.
Yeah, Grand Prix Legends is not easy to install, I think. I've done it about a hundred times, so it's easy for me, but I totally respect folks that, and, and every time I do it, I run into a new issue that I've never seen before. <laughs> I have to figure out, but it's worth it. It is definitely worth it. Grand Prix Legends is one of the best. Alright, so we're getting close to pit stop time. There's no force feedback in this game. Came out a little too early. Oh, Mario Andretti pits. Alright, so I'm going to take over the lead for a couple laps. That means, you know, I am, I am saving a little bit because he definitely pit with me under that yellow. And so I'm able to go a few laps further. Ari is gaining on me from behind. And in retrospect, it'll be so easy to see what strategy I should have done here. In the race, it's hard to know how it's all going to work out. The GPL demo is an easy way to try out Grand Prix Legends, but it doesn't doesn't lend itself well to trying to do anything else with it. Missing some important files to be able to actually mod it and install anything else. Alright, Alistair Jr. in front. Do one more lap here. I'm going to try to go as far as I can use him for slipstreaming. Can't go past the pits next time. This should be good. I got nobody behind me, it seems. So we'll come down the back straight away. Towards the pits, full fuel, four tires. We're still a few laps short. I think I'm going to be able to make this work to get to the end of the race. Slow it down. A little too fast there to start. Go to the pits. All right. <laughs> yes, everybody telling me to pit. All right, don't speed. Oh, car coming in. Head up to 80. Eight seventy eight nine miles an hour. All right, so Mario Andretti takes the lead back. It's times like these where it's tempting to not take the apron. Oh, we get passed by Michael as well, but he's right there. Times like these that it's tempting to not take the apron, but I don't want to cheat <laughs> as much. Go. All right. They all have to do it, so I'm going to do it too. So we'll keep it on boost 9 for a couple of laps until we figure out what the situation is. Corner. Alright, so Michael is not that far behind Mario. I really don't want Michael to win. So, I'm not going to win. I hope Mario wins. <laughs> I'm in P3 now. I'm ahead of Rick Mears. Rick's going to be on a weird strategy now. I'm hitting. Yeah, Rick Mears hasn't pit, so you gain over a lap on cars if you pit. He's, he's going to be way off strategy now. He's going to have to pit still. I should hopefully only have to pit twice more, right? Um, yeah, twice more. I think Rick also will have to pit twice more. So we're 12 seconds apart. We're just about halfway through the race. I actually have to save nine laps. We're halfway. I, 
this is maybe six laps that I have to save. Oh, Michael's gaining on Mario now. <laughs> Sorry, it's so, it's hard to do the mental math while you're racing. Sure, where uh, having a crew would be helpful. <laughs> Obviously. Who knows? We, I mean, we could get another caution. That would really screw everything up. Or it probably, I have a feeling it's going to run green to the end, but you never know. <laughs> yeah, I got 200 and, 205 race strategists or whatever it is. I appreciate everybody being here. This is fun. I have a lot of fun racing this series. A little less stressful than online racing, but kind of more stressful for other reasons. Uh, Michael is right there on Mario in front, six of a second behind. One twenty-three to go. Yeah, I think I'm very close to being able to do it, so I'm gonna stick on this strategy. I got a car gaining on me from behind. I'm just losing a little bit to mirrors. Slipstream here from Guido. Even the silent majority of you are still my race strategist. We're just saying full boost. Can I actually, it feels tight if I was to go full boost. Michael just took the lead. This has been a good race so far. It's always, the high-speed ovals are always fun. You know, I always liked, although this is probably, yeah, I think this one, in my opinion, is the hardest to drive, surprisingly. But if you put a little more conservative setup on, you can tune down the AI a little bit, and it's honestly, you know, kind of easy to drive, and then you just have to play the strategy, uh, which is fun. I had a lot of fun doing that back in the day. So we've got 119 laps to go. I want to make it to, like, lap 80. It's going to be not possible. Yeah, they're pulling away, but they're pulling around with each other, too. Oh! Michael Andretti's in the pits! What's going on with the strategy? Why is he in the pits? Okay. So take over second. Mario in the lead. Why is he in the pits? I don't know why he would have pit. The Andretti curse, I guess. each other. Well, they both did in pit. There's Michael. Got Raul Boisel coming up behind me. I'm 
sure he's... I don't know, he could have had an issue. Maybe they didn't get enough fuel in the car originally. I don't know why he would have pit there. That seems odd, but... Helps me. Yeah, he's gonna be on full fuel too, so he's... He's laps down now. Yeah, Mears, Mears is gaining on me, but still, I don't think I'm good on fuel. I got 30 more laps I can do about on this stint. I'm going to a nice slipstream now. But we're on the same strategy with Mears, so I want to keep him behind me. Everyone is saying conflicting things about strategy. Nobody knows. It's impossible. That's what's fun about it. We won't know till the end. I just gotta focus on my own race here. It'll work out how it works out. We got a car coming up. I think that might be Andretti behind me. Hold him up for a couple laps. He's, he's gonna probably be able to pass. That's weird if he's fast too. And I know he's quick generally, but if he's got full fuel, we got a couple cars in the pit lane. I like that I'm off strategy too. That means there'll be less cars coming in and out of the pits as I have to pit too. If I can make it to 86 to go on this stint, then we can absolutely go flat out the last few. And Thay's here. It's the white line. Hall in front. He's so slow. Bobby had a miserable season. Oh, I got a car right on me now. Actually, looks like one of the Marlboro cars. A little light getting into the corner. There's a great. 110 to go. I need to do about. Five. Okay, we're right about on the line. Give it a few more laps, and I might go back to full boost. If I can go to like 85, 84, even better. And I know it's just flat out to the end, you know, within reason. I have to imagine whoever is behind me is on a lighter fuel load. I'm gonna let him by though. Sullivan in front. So Sullivan's firmly going to be out of the championship battle, I think, after this. He really needed a good result today to keep it alive. Beat up, though. Love that car, though. Miller High Life. Golden. Inski. Not worried too much about mirrors, because we're on the same strategy, so... Once he physically gets around me on the track, then... Good. I think I'm right on the line for the strategy, so we're, we're doing okay. I don't think I saved that much. I very little fuel saving on the boost setting I'm on, but just enough to get it there while not losing too much speed. This is a good point. What's going on here? He's all 
all over the track. Two. Do they almost hit? Oh, three wide. Jeez. What are we doing? This is. It's always Dobson. It's always Dominic Dobson that I'm stuck behind. I had so many issues with him at Meadowlands. It's not. We're saving a little bit of fuel and. I'm gonna win this race not fighting with Dominic Dobson. I don't think uh, does. I don't think Mo has a teammate. Patrick Racing. Do they have two cars? In Eighty-nine. Yeah, you definitely. After you do a handful of races in IndyCar two, you begin to learn the AI. <laughs> That's half of the driving. Once you get the driving down, learning the AI is kind of your second second thing. Alright, so bit of apologies able to get by. I can see Rick Mears right behind me now. Team. I'm gonna go up to full boost. I think I can get to lap 85 or so. Yeah, Patrick Racing is just a single car. Oh, I mean, I always thought it was interesting that Marlboro sponsored multiple teams in IndyCar because they've got the sponsorship on Al Senior's car, which he only ran in a couple races, but uh, and then they also got I don't know, the Patrick Racing. Yeah, AJ is not not very quick today. here. I feel like I haven't seen Randy too much this race. Coming on the high side of Emo. Got stuck behind Randy. And so quick going to the corners. Full boost really does make a difference. Oh my god, Randy's gonna squeeze me right up against the wall. <laughs> what is he doing? Come on. No! He would have hit me. You have to back out of it. I got Rick Mears right on me now, so coming through turn two, understeering a little bit. Ah. Not what I want to be doing here. Went up on a Newman Haas. Third laps. Just too tight on fuel. I gotta go back down. You're good. Tell me for 20 laps. You're good on fuel. You're good on fuel. And now I go up on boost and everyone says, you're bad on fuel. All right, Rick Mears pit again. He's going to have to pit an extra time, I think. There's no way. But I don't think I'm really battling with Rick Mears. It's really just Mario up front. It's okay, I'm okay. I think I'm faster than Mario um, on full boost, and so... 20 seconds, a lot to pull in, but let's see how, how it uh, works out. Yeah, so Mears had to pit, which means he's gonna have to stop two more times. There's no way to do 100 laps on two, two tanks unless you're in super save mode, which I don't think he would do. So he's hoping for a yellow flag, really. laps 200 miles to go good this is the good stuff I'm happy I've made it this far but no you know still a long ways to go a lot of work to do We're on the high side Raul Boisel there seven on the line of about 85 to go. Yeah, 
Oh, Super Mario and Dreddy Pits. You're right. He he could very well not be able to make it on two more stops. Oh, I could have maybe gone around to the outside there. That dang Coogan. Dreddy's coming back on me. Aimed a bit on Mario. One of the Haas, Newman Haas cars behind me. Oh. And about, or lost about everything I had gained. Come by Bernard Jourdain. Downs of fuel left. Hopefully about 10 laps. And Guido Daco going in the pits. All right, this is going to work out pretty good. And then I should have no fuel worries for the last two stints of the race. And um, as long as there's not a yellow flag, it'll be game on. Just trying to catch Mario. We can look at how the next stint goes and maybe think about lowering the wing settings for the final stint if uh, I still need more speed. But I like the security. The little more wing gives me. I'm only like a half degree higher than I think optimal. But it gives you a little more security that you don't lose the rear end. And you know what? If Mario's got to pit that extra time, so be it. Then it's even easier. Yeah, I want to pit at 85 if I can, or even later. Back in 89, IndyCar definitely ran methanol. These days, I don't I think they still run E85, right? Oh, there goes Michael. He's going to me on the low side. Oh, we got right in there as well. Trying to make things interesting. Let's see if I can draft with Michael here. He's quick, but he's all messed up on, on pit strategy, I think. For a while, IndyCar had that deal or something with, with ethanol, or they advertised it on every race. Brayton is quick. Not expecting that. Why am I so slow suddenly? Oh. Right, M.O. Really wanting to get lapped, but... I mean, I imagine they made the switch away from ethanol in the late 90s when IndyCar went to the naturally aspirated engines. Guys are quick in front. You always get surprised. Scott Brayton is up to fifth. He started, like, towards the very back of the pack. It's up a fourth now. Battling with M.O. for fifth in front. All right, 89 laps to go. We're close on fuel still. Uh, really need to get that extra lap here just so comfy at the end. 21 seconds off of Mario. It's a lot to ask. We'll do our best. Well, these two in front dive down low. They're going in the pits. Okay, so they had to pit. I'm like a lap ahead of that whole group. That's probably from pitting right when the yellow flag came out. And they didn't. You remember they started behind me. Oh, Mario's in the pits. All right, Mario's in the pits, so we've got a few laps here. We'll lead a few more. I don't think we'll be able to get the most laps led today, but I don't know. Uh... I mean, I'd have to get up to the lead pretty soon here. There's been a few leaders. Rick Mears led a lot. Michael Andretti led a lot. He's seven laps to go. All right, this is going to be good.
Ray Hall. Can just run around the high side, maybe. I don't know. Bobby's a mess. He's going to pass me back, too. Wonderful. Fifty. I can go one more lap, and I'm gonna do it because I really want the security. Bob Rail just mess up everything that I'm working towards. Uh, he's gonna lose. I'm gonna be a lot further behind. I'll probably be behind both Andretti's here coming out of the pits. But I won't have to save any fuel. I should be able to just go flat to the end, full boost. He's so slow in the corners, and then we get on the straightaway. Maybe put a little more wing in the car. All right, we're coming to pit this time. And not lose too much time here. I want to go over my pit stall. First gear, roll it in. I don't know, probably not the best pit entry. All right, so two more stints. Two more stints to go. Be able to go up to full boost once I get out of the pits. From bar one. All right, release. No car coming in this time to worry about. Just don't speed. 50, 60. Hang around 78 or so. All right, come across the lines. I'm in third already. Like there goes the Andretti's ahead. <laughs> All right, exit the pits. Gotta stay on the apron here though. Dance with that white line. Easy to spin the car out here. Don't want to touch the grass at all. Full boost. Try to rock it away. A few cars right in front. Once they're senior. All right, let's just get settled in. Understeer there. Seniors coming into the pits. All right, that's good. Good for me. Yeah, Rick Mears got by, but I think he's going to have to pit still twice. I'm really not worried about him. I don't think, I don't think Mears is going to be an issue. I'm going to get through the first couple of laps, which are always terrible for me. Yeah, we're on full boost now, so boost nine. Twenty-eight seconds off. That's a lot. I lost ten seconds there, fooling around with Bobby Ray Hall. Probably the pit entry. Let's see, all right. Got to focus here in the final couple of stints. Yeah, for the cockpit itself, there's a dial bottom left of the cockpit, which is on nine right now, which is. Full boost, and you can see the boost number 45 inches right below the tachometer bar in the center of the dash. Obviously, it goes down when I'm off the throttle. Well, I love those settings. I mean, they're crucial for oval racing, and I hope to God that whatever that new IndyCar game that comes out has adjustments because it's I mean on a road course they're still important but on an oval there without them the racing really isn't <laughs> isn't what it is yeah I'm gonna be like, very tight on fuel but we'll see how it all works out I gotta see if I can catch these guys 28 seconds now. Got to use all the clear track and slip streaming, and now's the time to maybe think about taking small chances here and there if they're really going to gain me time. Waking up behind phase. Wasn't anything I could do there. Just going to get trapped. Hit me. Okay. 
See, earlier in the race, I would have just sat behind Thaze there, but not anymore. We're fighting for the win. Feel pretty good right now. One and two is awesome. Turn three is always sketchy, but man, I lost some time getting around the lap traffic. Gotta hope it comes back to me on other lap traffic. It's a little light there. Gain two tenths of a second. I gotta gain more than that. I think it's going to be hard to catch Mario unless he's got a pit twice to do like a splash and go at the very end and I don't Racing line through the corner, still having to lift. I can't really go flat out in race trim. I'd have to put a little more wing on. Would be more aggressive. And again, I can't tell you how easy it is to lose the rear end here in turn three. Oh, just a tenth there. So Michael's pitting. He's definitely going to have to stop again. So he's effectively out of the race unless there's a yellow flag. No way he's going to make up all that time. Especially since I'm able to pretty much run flat out now. Oh, boy, Zell. That's not good. I can't do stuff like that. Again here, low side. Second, even with that, could have gained more on him. He pits with like 48 laps to go. I don't think he'll make it to the end. It is very similar to Indianapolis how this is all working out. I don't want to jinx myself, but. Although, at Indy, we thought Scott Pruitt was definitely good on fuel, and he pit. It's an issue in the car with, like, 15 laps to go. Twenty-seven second range now, so I am gaining on him, but very, very slowly. I mean, the AI in IndyCar 2 have got a pretty simplistic idea for pit strategy, but the fact that they have one and they do different strategies is the big thing that not a lot of other sims, you know, outside of the Papyrus and Jeff Crammon sims do. You know, you can, you can have in, like, the settled course of the cars will pit, you know, and get to the end of the race, but they'll also um, all do the same thing every race. We saw there some cars pit, some didn't. It's all, you know, there's an algorithm in place. Just keeps it interesting. I 
Took them all right on fuel. 25 gallons. 25 or so gallons left in the tank. Run it into turn three now. Sixty-eight laps, so that'll be forty minus five and eight, forty-three. It's gonna be. I'm gonna be actually like no fuel left crossing the line at the end, but we'll be good. I might save a little here and there, just having to pass traffic and all that. So we'll be good. All right, whole bunch of cars pitting now, which is beautiful to see. Pretty clear track in front this stint so far. That time didn't gain anything. Just a tenth, actually. We got Teo Fabi in front of me here in the Porsche. Green him. Really aggressively slipstreaming slip the AI now, just trying to gain any little advantage I can. We could have done that the whole race, who knows? Always be coulda, shoulda, woulda at the end of this thing. So, the top three here, we all have to make one more stop at least. I think Rick Mears has got to make two more stops, and it's questionable whether or not Mario has two more stops in him. Oh, we'll come to the high side of Derek Daly there. Only 6.3. That's what I like to see. Fuel strategy is great, and him having to pit an extra time is great. But passing him on the track would be a cherry on top. And three here. Danny Sullivan. What happened to you, buddy? So slow there. Catching Michael Andretti, I believe. Use him to uh, slipstream. He catches dad. Steer a little bit there, but we're okay. We're okay. Down into turn three. Oh, we got AJ Foyt making things interesting. Oh man, I got a little weird there, Foyt, in the roadblock that he is. <laughs> That's enough. I don't need uh need those moments. Last, of course, last a few tenths there. The sim, the sim doesn't have blue flags, but for the most part, especially around the tracks that have been redone by the community, the uh, AI get around the lap traffic pretty well. The lap traffic, you know, you can get by them all right, too. So it all kind of works out. Yeah, I don't think fuel's going to be an issue either. Bad, bad turn one. Hoping Rick Mears pits soon here, and that will seal the deal that he's got to go. Extra stop. Oh, losing time to Mario. I think it's coming down to traffic, honestly. Wiesel there. Very slow. He's on full fuel or something. Probably the same for Sullivan when I passed him. Yeah, Mears probably has the quickest car here today, but he had some issue in the middle of the race and hasn't been able to recover from it. The caution right now would, like, change everything completely. But let's knock on wood, hope that doesn't happen. 60 to go. So... It's all going to depend on the pits. Wondering if I should try to go aggressive on the wings. You know, we're in the championship still, and I don't want to 
back off at all. I want to try to win this, but I also I can't do something that would take me out of the race completely. I could still easily finish in 30th or 25th or something. And at 24 seconds. Yeah, it has been a clean race. Allenser Jr. lost the rear end at one point and took himself pretty much out. Other than that, it's been fairly clean. Just a lot of shoving past groups of lap traffic. Down to 23, I gained a second that lap. Need to be doing that lap after lap. Mario's in the pits. So, what's he doing? With six, 57 laps, I mean, there's no way he's going to make it to the end. What? All right. Oh, he's out. He had a failure. I was going to say, that's a weird, the AI wouldn't do that. So, he had a failure in the car. Oh my god. All right. Well, this is ours to lose now because Rick Mears is going to have to pit any lap now. He's right up the road, actually. <laughs> All right. So we're really uh, in the driver's seat at this point. Mario, you know, Andretti curse or something. There is no, I will say this with certainty, there is no variable in the AI settings that you can put on a driver that makes them have more mechanical failures than other ones make them crash more in things but there's just an aggression setting so the fact that he keeps blowing engines is kind of coincidence but also poetic there goes mirrors in the pits so he's definitely gonna have to pit one more time like me so this is all gravy so i really just gotta keep my eye on ari leindyke behind and of course the last car is in front But it seems victory has presented itself, and all I have to do is take it. <laughs> uh, it's like when I did the, uh, the Indianapolis 500 game, the original game, when Emerson Fittipaldi and Alistair Jr. hit each other. Sometimes these things just happen. It's beautiful. Still a lot to do though. There's so many enough laps, and I gotta make a pit stop and everything, which is tough enough on its own. I got a 15 second lead on Ari. He actually might be gaining on me. I gotta keep my eye on that. I am flat out and full boost. Three laps to go. We're gonna be very good on fuel, actually. I probably saved a lap or two longer than I needed to, but. You know, and you could say, because I was pushing, Mario, you know, also had to push and broke his car. You know, that would, in real life, that would absolutely be a thing. Kmart won't be happy, but Sunoco might be. Best of your phase there. Two to go. It's going to be a long 50 laps here at the end laps is the length I do when I'm just having fun, so <laughs> it'll be a long, uh, long fun race. If anybody does try IndyCar 2, I always, I like 20% races if you're just trying to have fun and not do these crazy long ones, because uh, it's just enough length where you actually have to make a pit stop and all the AI do as well. 10% a little too short. You don't have to make a, a pit stop so it doesn't quite feel the same. I'm gonna keep him pushing. Ari Leindyke is, we're about the same speed. We have been the whole race. He's been behind me the whole race, so I have to think I could stay in front of him. I mean, a lot of lateral load in the car there through three. And Lewis running me up the track as always. I don't need to, why would I go aggressive on the wings? I have the field covered. Not changing a thing in the car. It's been flawless. And now that the fastest cars have all removed themselves, I can 
afraid to victory. I was thinking, if anything, I want to put a little more wing on the car, but it feels good. I don't need to change a thing. Under 50 to go so in the last 20% of the race. Yeah, I don't know how Alan Sir Jr. I got to watch him too. 24 seconds is a lot to make up in 50 laps, but he could do it. Especially with the pit stop in there. I think I'm slow on pit stops, which is what is scaring me the most right now. I think I've been losing like five or six seconds in a pit stop. My entry is definitely slow, and I have the hardest entry out of anybody because it's the first stall. Definitely not backing off at all, but I don't need to take as many risks now. I'm trying to catch anybody. I just got to keep these guys behind me. I think the temp can go up to like 240, I want to say. That's a good point. It's gone up quite a lot. Running full boost that would happen. Here's AJ Foyt moseying his way around. now in front one at a time just take all the lapsed cars got a few laps till I pit be pitting right about 42 to go beautiful about two or three gallons of fuel left at the end of the race at the very most yeah I'm gaining on Ari about holding station though with Alan Sir Jr. are pitting in front Looks like Junior. Oh no, that was uh, Jan Bikas, I think. Alan's Junior is pitting. Maybe it was him. All right, 45 laps to go. Back in the top five. Rick Mears in third, a lap down. Michael Andretti in fourth, a lap down. Gotta make one stop, so they might go. There's Alistair Jr. coming out of the pit, so I put a lap on him too. Look at that back, but. Just about to catch a string of laps, cars. This is a bit of a mess in front of me. Cars in the pits, potentially. One of them goes and pits. All right, 43. I might pit this next time if this situation doesn't improve, because I will make it. Oh, my God. We know Daco on the high side. You know, keeping, keeping me awake. Steve Saline, too. I should be able to get him. Oh, we got Raul Boisel there. I'm down into turn three. We'll go one more lap. Right in pitting now. I will pit this next time by. I don't need the craziest pit stop in the world. Just you know, the normal, the normal good <laughs> will be fine. I might lose a little bit of time to Ari, but 21 seconds is not too bad. I'm through three and four on the low side. Blow it up take too much time it's slow on the entries i gotta work on that all right we'll pit final pit stop Ari line deck also in the pits we'll take full fuel that's fine definitely can run to the end just need to try to get a good exit there we go don't speed right up to like 75 
on the pit lane. All right, 41 laps to go. I'm in the lead. Pass the pace car here. Got to do one final one of these. It exits. Might lose the lead here to Mears, but he's got to pit again. I'm not, not too worried about it. Get on the back straight away. Clear track behind me. Nice and easy here into the corner. Get back on track. So Michael Andretti's five seconds off. Mario, Michael Andretti, right. Mario crashed out. Michael's behind me, but he's going to have to pit again. Rick Mears just up the road. He's also going to have to pit again. I'm really looking at Ari Leyendijk and Alistair Jr. there. 23 seconds back. It's not too bad. Let's see what it is when he crosses. Oh yeah, I'm very good on fuel. Here comes Michael. I'm honestly, I don't, I don't really care if he gets by me. He's got to pit again. I don't want him to go too far into the lead. So I, I kind of want to use him maybe to draft with. You no, know, if they get 20, 30 seconds up the road, I'd have to worry about them doing a short splash and go and then coming out still with me being within striking range so don't want to lose them too much but i'm going to be a little slow on fuel here full fuel okay things are looking good but still a whole stint to do so it's certainly not over so much could happen God forbid a yellow flag. Again, I think Rick Mears has the fastest car here today, but he just hasn't hasn't worked out for him with the yellow flag and maybe some pit issues. And Dreddy as well. I don't know if I was quicker than him. Certainly not right now. I'm stuck behind a lapped car. 6.6 .6 off the lead. I need to try to keep the lead as close as I can. Yeah, I think, I think the temp dropped because I hit and everything. It'll go back up. Especially towards the end of the stint as well, I'm almost flat out around the whole track. The car doesn't have as much speed right now. Then your phase comes in on the low side into turn three. into turn one there. Got Steve Saline ahead. Slow, slowest cars in the race this race. He qualified so well. What was it? Is it at Toronto? With the Toronto Meadowlands, he qualified like in the top five for some reason. Yeah, it's Michael Andretti in front of me. I want to keep them I want to stay within 20 seconds of the lead because there's no way they'd be able to pit and come back out even with a splash and go that quick but you know the closer i can stay the better because if they do only splash and go and come out you know 10 seconds behind me they'll be fast and rick mears is very fast so, not out of the realm of possibility i just got to try to keep it up in this first part of the stint before they pit Senior, he'll fuck out. It's a, it's a little easier to read the comments around here than uh, than the road courses, but I appreciate everybody watching. I hope it's entertaining today. It's been a good race so far, at least from my viewpoint. Eight seconds back, I lost a little bit that time. AJ Foyt coming up. In a way, I am talking to myself. That's the weird part. All right. A 
the slipstream off Hoyt, although he's quick right now. Must be at the end of his stint, 32 to go. On him here, actually I want to try to the outside if I can. There's a little bit of time on entry, but that'll just make the whole situation less perilous. Go. On the outside of Foyt. Into the line. Another four tenths. <laughs> the NASCAR one season was a. I gotta maybe do something in NASCAR a little more proper. That was more for fun and no practice or anything. I have been. Preparing for these races to make sure I do well. I also have probably three, three years more of time experience in IndyCar than NASCAR. Stream here of ammo. Michael Andretti in the pits. All right, so nine seconds off Rick Mears. See where Michael comes out, but I don't think it'll be a factor anymore as long as there's no drama in the final laps. Out of the pits. He might finish in the top three, though, which will be a pain for the championship, but it is what it is. That was quite quick here. side of MO. There goes Michael. I put a whole lap on him. So, not a factor. A little tentative there coming into turn three. Every single lap I'm imagining the rear end kicking out because it has happened to me. 9.7 seconds. Here should have to pit in the next 10 laps or so, and then it'll be it'll be clear what this, the future holds. given up at all. I've got to push as hard as I can without overstepping the limits. To be as conservatively fast as possible. I have a lap on the whole field is lapped except for me and, and Rick Mears. When he pits, that'll open up a few cars back to the lead lap, but there's going to be a few of us here up front. Rick, there's no way. He pit at, I think, at lap, like, 60 before. So there's no way he's going to go all the way to the end. You'd have to be on... I don't even think with the heaviest saving it's possible to do that. So on the low side of Kevin Kogan here. 24 laps to go. 8.5 seconds off. I gained a bunch there. But I want to see Guido Daco here on the low side. Sullivan exits the pits. No, nope, not a factor. Nowhere today. We're two now. All right, 23 laps to go. Old 
it together, old buddy. Eight seconds now, so I'm pulling him in. There's no way you can make a pit stop and exit with eight seconds, so absolutely going to end up in the lead once he pits. Question will be how much and how fast will Rick Mears be? Lap traffic seems to have thinned out quite a bit. There will be some retirements from the race we'll look at at the end. Mears might be saving, but there's no way he's going to make it. I'm on a half tank of fuel. <laughs> if he pit, he should be pitting any lap now. If he pit at lap, like, I think it was 58. There's no way. If he does, we're going to have the officials check the uh, fuel lines. It must be a mile long. Beak is here working on the back of Didier Thays. Might make things interesting on the front straightaway. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on, boys. Need. I do not need to stop again, I'm pretty sure. 99% sure. We are good to the end. The bar's up a little more in the front so that the turn in doesn't bite quite as much because sometimes that can catch you off guard if you really have to rip the wheel like I just did to get around those lap cars. 19 laps to go. I got 20 laps of fuel. We're good. We're good to get to the end. On Rick. Hit. mind if Rick pit with a lap or two to go, but I don't want to sweat it out to the end of the race. Uh, but yeah, the later he pits, the less chance he would have of coming back at me. That is... That would be a good thing, but yeah, if we could not leave it for the final five laps, that would be also nice. 6.7 back now. He's really dropped off for whatever reason. No more cars in the pit. A lot of cars taking their final pit, so I imagine Rick's Gonna be with him here any second. He actually gained a little bit on me there, but 17 laps to go are really into the final final laps of this one. Right behind one of the red cars here. Which is pretty quick in front. Roberto Guerrero maybe? The inside of him. 16 to go, 7.3 seconds. Pitting. <laughs> uh, edge of my seat. This is kind of like how Indy ended, except at Indy we didn't know Scott Pruitt had to pit. Here, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that Rick Mears has to pit. I'm also catching a big line of fast or lapped cars. Oh, it's the wall there for good luck. We gotta treat the wall right so that it doesn't. I'm not going to grab you. Five point eight. I'm going to lose a whole bunch of time trying to get through this lap traffic, but I'm going to hit. Just got to do these guys one at a time. One guy looking low a little bit. It's going to pit. No. Still staying out. 
Oh, 5.7 seconds now, 13 to go. Lewis on the high side. I really don't want to be on the low side of an of a AI car coming through three and four because if they pit, they'll just wipe me out. On. Oh, Rick's staying out still. Oh, a couple cars on lap. He's in the pits. He's in the pits. All right. Got by him. Come across the line. Got 30 seconds or so on the cars behind. 12 laps to go. We had to pit with 12 to go. I just got to let these guys sort themselves out a little bit before I try anything on Lewis. Oh. Okay, I really don't need to worry too much. 21 seconds ahead of, of Mears. He's still exiting the pits, actually. All right, we got Derek Daly here in front. God, no, no, no. We got Rick Mears there. He, there he is coming out of the pits. I'm actually going to put a lap on him. We got a red car coming up behind me. I think that's Guerrero again. This is so frustrating. I just want to clear laps. Not cars jockeying for position right in front of me. I just don't want to make a silly move and make contact. And laps to go. Really slow car up top here. Might be Boisel. And Rath around him, hopefully. He'll be right with me as we come into turns three and four. I'm, I'm way good on fuel. I just <laughs> need to get through the lapped cars. Nine laps to go. The guys behind are like, oh, I'm catching him. I'm catching him. Doing. Hey, I can also wreck into each other, which would be the scary thing. Oh, pass Kogan three wide on the back straight away. Just got to crew it there, I think. Yeah, I like that, Andrew. Definitely taking my time. <laughs> Eight laps to go. I'm actually gaining on the group and back still, so... Just gotta hope nobody does anything super silly in front of me. You know, I'm not that much faster on the straightaways is kind of the issue. I'm mostly fast in the corners, which has been... So I added a little bit of wing before the race, which... Been good. Rick Mears here behind me is going to unlap himself. And I have no pride in having the cars lapped down. I could win by a tenth of a second, all I care. Oh man. Getting on the brakes mid corner is uh, not my idea of fun. Under the low side of Thays. Yeah, I don't know how Alistair Jr. has recovered into second. He had a very quick card today, and I'm kind of lucky he crashed himself early because that could have worked out very differently. All right, we're getting towards the bitter end here. Six laps to go. Yeah, Rick is back on the lead lap. I mean, he's up in the top four. It's a good finish. Six laps to go. I got plenty of fuel. Whole mess of cars in front. <laughs> no, Alan Sir Jr.'s not gonna catch him. Don't worry. You got five laps. He's 23 seconds behind. He's gonna have to gain five seconds a lap to catch me. This is very frustrating. You kind of want to cruise to a victory at this late in the race, but these guys keeping me on my toes and just envisioning smoke in front suddenly. Across line, four to go. Oh, 
I can I can finish behind this whole pack of cars. Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Might be frustrating to watch, but it's really not uh, not important for me to get around them at this point. It's just making sure I don't get any kind of accident. Oh, I all slow each other up there. Let me get around one of them finally. Eric Daly on the outside. He's gonna have a slipstream though, and I got fast. Longboro car behind me here. Here comes Daly around the outside again. More spread out now in front, so we'll see how this all works. Boisel. Lock me. The inside as we'll head down to turn three. God. On the apron into three. Five gallons of fuel left, but just a couple more. Alger Jr. pits, two laps to go. Oh, they just missed it. Must have run out of fuel. Ari Lion Dyke, 22 seconds back. Just need to get it around here, the final couple of laps. Yeah, if there's a yellow flag now, it's just, it would be the end of it. All right, come out of turn four. Whole mess of cars in front. Keeps the high line. White flag, one more. Daily have the corner. All right, coming low. Emerson Fittipaldi gets by, no matter. Right, on the back straightaway then. Oh my god. One more entry into turn three. Here we go. Ah, uh, it was a very subdued ending, but strategy win. That pitting under the yellow flag. Right as the yellow came out, I lucked out with where I was, made the decision, and won the Michigan 500. Man, that wasn't an easy race. I definitely did not have the fastest car, and it was a strategy, a strategy win again, but two in a row now for the 500 milers. We're alive for the triple crown. Oh, that was an intense race. Hopefully watching was fun too. I know, you know, oval racing, it can be just lap after lap, round and round and round. Uh, but there's so much going on during the race with the strategy and passing lapped cars and just making sure, you know, you position the car right the whole time. And uh, it was good. That was a good one. I didn't, I didn't think coming into today that it would be, you know, easy. I didn't think I knew I could win it because I've won races here before, but... If I could do donuts, I would do them, but you can't actually do donuts in, <laughs> in IndyCar 2. Um, not possible to do, but winning at Michigan. Yeah, that's going to be a quick race. One caution, which is honestly more than most of the races this season. Um, but I think, uh, man, Mario had something, although I think he was also going to have to pick kind of like Mears was, but maybe a little later even. Uh, but Mario was quick and that could have worked out differently. Also, you know, Alistair Jr., if he didn't wreck, that could have been, it wouldn't have had a yellow flag. It would have been a completely different race. So it really worked out uh, for, for this one. Yeah, I can't wreck this car. We're going to Pocono next, which is which is where we need to go. All right. So winning. I'm going to step aside for about 30 seconds and I'll be back. And then we'll take a look at the points and the finishing and oh, everything, man. I'll be back.
sight. Ah. Very satisfying to win. <laughs> Again. You just wonder how how it could happen more than once. Yes, next up is Pocono. I believe Alancer Sr. did this in real life, winning all three, but only one time getting the triple crown. Take a look at all the final results and all that. There's the crew pushing the car into victory lane. Uh, I say it every time, but I would always point it out. I love the guy with his head. He's maybe, I don't know who he's talking to. But very satisfying win. <clears throat> love the 500 miler, so if I'm able to uh, get a win, then I will take it. So let's look at the standing results. Ryan Axelson getting the win. I led 36 laps, so nowhere near enough to get the extra point for the most but still the win, so I get 20 points for that. We'll see how it all shakes out. Ari Leyendijk finishing in second. He was always good at the 500s. Um, he definitely outran his equipment many years. I think tainted later by like his uh, what 98 win of the Indy 500. It not seeming a real accomplishment, but he won at the height of cart in 91, right? Yeah, Rick Mears led 115 laps. He had the car to beat. He just wasn't on the right strategy towards the end. And he's pit an extra time in the middle. But even though he pit an extra time, um, still able to come away with third. And thank you, Darren. Congratulations, dude. Love to see you tackle Daytona in one of these beasts. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I will try to go fast at the Chicken Triangle. And I saw JB. Thank you. Go get the Triple Crown. It's It's got to happen now. I got to try maybe a little harder for Pocono to try to get it. Uh, but Pocono had its own challenges. Yeah, too bad it's not actually for a million. We'll look further down the order. Michael Andretti. Ah, oh, SK. Thank you. Great job in the race. Thanks for keeping IndyCar Racing 2 alive. Ah, uh, it's easy when you got <laughs> a sim so good as this. It's on great races. I don't... There's nothing else out there that you could do a 500-mile race in and have it be fun the full way through. So... My pleasure, and thank you all for keeping IndyCar 2 alive at the uh, IndyCarRacing2.net. I have a link to it, I think, in the description. It's the site. If you want to just join the forums and see what people are working on, but also all the downloads and everything. That's right, 1990, Lion Deck 1. One year off, but yeah. Um, I, I also made, I mentioned earlier in the stream, I, I made an IndyCar Racing 2 install. Oh yeah, I gotta put the podium hat on. <laughs> I, uh... I uh, made an IndyCar Racing 2 install video, so you can uh, you can go check that out. It's in the link uh, description as well. And so if you're interested in trying out IndyCar 2, it's not that hard. The video is kind of long because I cover everything, but um, you know maybe take an hour for you to get it up and running. So not too bad. All right, Alonso Jr. finishing in fifth, still with that crash. Um, still coming away in fifth. He was pretty quick today. And whatever they did to his car, maybe they didn't put the wing back on. It's even so fast. Scott Brayton started in 20th position and finished in uh, sixth. Pretty good for Brayton there. Emerson Fittipaldi, Scott Pruitt, Teo Fabi, Derek Daly, Fabrizio Barbaza, Dobson Lewis, Al Unser finished 14th, Danny Sullivan back in 15th. Man. Uh, Ludwig Heimrath in 16th, Raul Boisel in 17th, Bobby Rahal, another terrible day for Rahal with the Krako car finishing in 18th, AJ Foyt, the chicane, back in 19th, eight laps down. Uh, Wood, what's his name? Joe Wood? Jim Wood? John Wood? John Wood. John Jones. Uh, Bernard Jourdain, Guido Daco still running, Scott Saline, or Steve Saline. Uh, we saw quite a few times today. Kevin Kogan, man, he was slow today. Didier Thays back in 26th. And there we go. So 26 finishers out of the 30. So we only had four retirees. And it looks like Mario Andretti, after leading 96 laps of the race, uh, had an engine failure. Took him out. He was, he was one of the main competition today. So that is just the Andretti luck, isn't it? Finishing there back in 27th. Suspension failure for Pancho Carter. That's scary to have at 240. Uh, but Pancho Carter out. We had Roberto Guerrero have an engine failure. 
they came out of the race. And then John Andretti, who, uh, yeah, I never saw him in the whole race after only 25 laps out to a uh, oil pump. Two, wow, two hour, 18 minute race. So 218 mile, I think that would have been the fastest 500 mile race of all time. I don't know, I have to compare that to what the uh, speed was at my Indianapolis 500, because that was a quick race too. But we only had one caution for three laps and uh, 15 lead changes. Definitely was busy up front, there's no doubt about that. It seemed like for a minute nobody wanted to win this, but a great race around Michigan. I'll save that um, just in case something terrible happens. <laughs> resurrect the championship all right so we'll exit out we'll take a look then this was this is the results for the race and now to the points and so i got the lead you know obviously extended the lead i've got three wins now to equal up with michael andretti um 153 points to his 125 and so uh yeah i'm crushing it with top fives and top tens and everything got a truck coming across the street behind me but uh Balancer Jr. in third place now, taking over for uh, Danny Sullivan, which makes sense. He, uh, Danny's very much fallen off. Doesn't even have a win, so he's pretty much out of it. Balancer Jr., I mean, I'm sure he's not mathematically out of it, but it would be a uh, pretty aggressive comeback. Michael Andretti then in second, 125, and Balancer Jr. with 92. So my championship to lose, for sure, especially coming to Pocono next Another 500 miler. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but soon, hopefully. Um, and then we go back to some road circuits. Four or two, two uh, three road circuits and one small oval to end the season from here. So, this is a lot of fun. I hope, uh, hope folks enjoyed watching. Um, I'll be doing Pocono here in the next few weeks, hopefully, and uh, we'll move on from there. But now, getting to the end of the season, hopefully, they. Uh, they race in Talladega today. Hope everybody enjoyed watching. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all again next time. See ya.